imamo izuzetnu čast da govorimo o filmu Suđenje Ratku Mladiću. O tom filmu će za sada govoriti Peter Mekloski, on je bio tužilac, a očekujemo dolazak reditelja Henrya Singera i Roberta Millera, kao i producenta filma Ida Van Brusgarda. Za početak, gospodinu Milleru ćemo poželjeti dobrodošlicu. Welcome to our festival in Belgrade. What was the hardest part of your job during the trial? The hardest part of the job during the trial, um, well, it was probably meeting again for sometimes the sixth, seventh, eighth time with various victims that had been testifying ever since 2000 um, with the trial of General Kerstich and working with them to testify, you know, for the fifth or sixth time, at which point they are, we've learned that they're actually reliving the events in a horrible way. The first, first or second time they testified, it was sort of cathartic for them to get out the story and they felt good about it. Then the, the third, the fourth, the fifth, it, it, you're taking them back through the nightmare and to actually travel with them through that pain to try to bring them into a courtroom to have to experience again was really awful, and um, we didn't always do it. We sometimes decided with them that, okay, we'll try to get your statement in, um, in paper, and, and leave it alone. But going through that with the victims over and over again is, uh, is, is very difficult, especially because you get to know these people over the years, and nobody wants to put them through it again. But it was so important for the trial that, that we had to. Your focus is on Srebrenica. Yes. Is this the hardest part? Um, th that's my whole 20 year career was investigating and prosecuting uh, Srebrenica. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a, an enormous, large scale crime, incredible suffering. And uh, so that uh, was something you know, we had to deal with and get used to. And the, a lot of the investigation involved. Uh, exhumations and uh, working with the forensic experts at the gravesite and um, dealing with the remains of people. So that got to, that that takes us to especially when you're talking about years. Uh, how many victim is in Srebrenica? Well, mm -hmm. it, it you know, victims get you know defined um, in many ways. If you're talking about family that lost people, um, one or more, many families were completely obliterated, 30, 40 people. Um, we know that there were 6,000 people taken from mass graves that have been identified by DNA. There's roughly another thousand that have been taken from the woods or from execution sites that have been identified by DNA. And we know there's roughly 1,000, 1,500 more that are, have been noted as missing by their families and have not, uh, have not yet and may never be found. So those are the actual dead, some 7,000 to 8,000, uh, 7,000, over 7,000 murder victims. Um, and perhaps 1,000 died in combat or an area in, in unknown reasons, and then all their family members, you know, that 20, 30, 40, 50, 1,000, uh, so the community of Eastern Bosnia are, are all victims to some degree, and, and um, the, the Serbians that uh, were affected by that. We had one uh, Serbian um, father that was very angry at one of the uh, Bosnian Serb generals because uh, his son was forced to be in an execution squad and uh, committed suicide as a result. Couldn't, couldn't live with being part of that. So there's clearly uh, offshoot uh, victims uh, on, on both sides. We see that we have a very good rating, Henry Singer and Robert Miller. Welcome. Allergies were late. Nice to meet you. My name is Ivan. Hey, Henry. Hey, Ivan. Is this wrong? Uh, what were the challenges of the pro 
production of these movies for you guys? Um, well, I think there were lots of challenges. Uh, I think, first of all, it was a huge and complicated case. And uh, just um, trying to understand it uh, as non-lawyers was, was already a challenge. Uh, we filmed, I think we shot probably 450 hours of material over the course of the five-year film. And when it came to editing it, that, that's obviously a huge amount of material. We had access to all of the, uh, arc we had access to all the testimony of the trial. And of course, we had archive uh, footage from, from the war and the aftermath of the war. So I think we had close to a thousand hours of footage. So to try to make a film that's nuanced, that's complex, uh, but that's also um, has a narrative, that has a compelling narrative that a general audience would understand uh, was, was hugely challenging. And of course, we ended up with a film um, that really just focuses on the two genocide charges uh, against uh, General Milodic. But even with, and that, even reducing it to that, we had to reduce that even more because of course, if you look at our film and you look at the number of witnesses, uh, our film is a tiny sliver of the trial, but we hope that looking, we hope we've created a narrative and that looking at those two genocide charges and, and, and Peter McCloskey's in a, as good a position as anybody to judge whether we did this, that we, we reflected in some way uh, the complexity and the epic nature of the, of, of the trial. Um, I think, I think as, as Henry said, to distill the, the, the trial, which is a very complex process that happened over five years into uh, a hundred um, minute film was really challenging. Um, I think that, I mean, key, you're making, a, you're making the film for, for an uh, audience in the, the Balkans and in Bosnia that lived through the war and has very intimate and personal experience of the war, but you're also making a film for the out, outside world. So we were very kind of conscious of providing enough information for people who knew nothing about Bosnia um, or very little about Bosnia to understand the significance of what was going on. Um, uh, but we had to get the balance right in terms of not supplying so much information that it would start to detract uh, from the emotion um, of what they were watching. Because yes, you know, the, the film is about a trial, it's about a process, but fundamentally it's about human beings. Um, and I think the more information that you supply, the more that you can obstruct that kind of connection and empathy. So um, to make it accessible, to make it understandable, to find a narrative line that people will want to engage with and follow, um, um, I think, you know, was really kind of one of the, one of the biggest uh, challenges that, that we faced. Uh, Radko Matic is a hero for some Serbs and a criminal for the Boston people. Where is the line between these two? I'm not sure there is a line between these two. Uh, you know, I, I think if you watch the film, and I don't know if members of the press have watched it yet, I think we end the film, I think, with a suggestion that uh, the verdict um, hasn't in any way unified um, uh, onlookers. I think, I think Rob and I perhaps went into this slightly naively that um, people will just uh, accept and respect the court's judgment, but in fact, um, I think the region is so polarized and feelings about General Milanovic are, are, are so extreme that in many ways I think one could argue that the, that the court process has perhaps in the short term uh, made that worse. So I don't, I, don't, I don't think the film tries to, I think the film just tries to reflect the court and the court process and the court verdict. Um, and I think if you watch the film and I think if you get a sense of people in the region, there, there isn't a line, there isn't an overlap at the moment. I, don't, I think if in, any, in, in most cases it's probably hardened uh, the this, this separation. Uh, but I think what, what the film tr attempts to do by filming with both the prosecution and the defense um, and with victims, uh, incredibly brave victims that come to give evidence uh, and with Mladic's supporters is trying to understand those differing perceptions. Um, you know, coming from uh, the UK, we have a particular understanding of, 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 of General Mladic, um, but clearly he has a huge amount of uh, support both, you know, in Serbia to a degree and in, and then particularly in the Republic of Srpska. Um, and it was important, we felt, to try and, and understand why, why that was.
Well, we try to deal with the, the facts and the truth, and uh, I don't think there is uh, a different truth for a different perspective. I think the truth was as it was exposed in evidence year after year after year in each of uh, the, the trials we did. And uh, I think the, the stark truth is obviously a very difficult thing to accept if, um, if you're a member of the Bosnian uh, Serb uh, community. Um, and, um, and will probably never be accepted fully. Um, and so there's uh, realistic enough to know that trials and, and, and films um, may reach some of the more objective-minded folks, but unfortunately in this world we're not going to change many minds. Kolegi, izvolite, imali pitanja? Izvolite. The main idea for why you choose the topic. I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer for myself, and I'm sure Rob will. Subject. I think I personally felt that this was a um, historic trial, and the work of the ICTY was historic. Um, uh, it's kind of, and Pete knows more about this than I do, but. Um, uh, it's extraordinary that the ICTY came into being in the first place, uh, and we certainly won't see anything like that in the in the at the moment, given uh, the developments around the world and um, you know the Security Council. Um, I, I I felt even though here, obviously for this region, it is the mo you know an extraordinarily significant uh, that's an understatement moment in history. I think for the rest of the world, uh, it it was passing unnoticed. The, the work of the ICTY and the Mladic trial in general, and I think we felt this was a historic moment, and we actually should, we should, act, we should document it, um, because most of the, most of the circles I run in, and I run in educated, interesting circles, people really were not aware of the ICTY. They were not aware that General Mladic had been arrested. If they were aware of it, they didn't care about it. Um, and so we just felt initially that this was a really important moment to document. I think as we were making the film, I think it became, that, that kind of shifted. And we, as we've seen the rise of sort of populism and nationalism around the world, I think the, the film becomes more germane, becomes more, more pertinent. So I think we were, we were glad that we set off on making, on making this film. Uh, but the reasons for making it sort of slightly shifted and, and kept us going. I, I, I mean, I, we obviously spent a lot of time together over the last six years discussing our uh, motivations. Um, I, uh, I, I think initially, when we made the approach to the tribunal when General Mladic was arrested, it was because it felt like a historic moment. Um, we weren't um, experts or authorities on what happened in the former Yugoslavia, but um, the name Mladic was familiar, certainly as a kind of prominent figure. So. When we started filming after a kind of year of access negotiations with the tribunal, it, it, it felt like a kind of enormous privilege to be on the inside when um, history is being made. Um, as we, as the filming progressed and we got to know people from the region, um, victims that came to give evidence, um, uh, Mladic supporters, um, we I think we began to appreciate how polarised Bosnia still is. Um, and that polarization was encapsulated in Mladic himself. Um, and we also came to appreciate the significance of the trial for those people that, through the process of the filming, we really began to care about, and for a country we really began to care about. Um, and then I think, thirdly, um, uh, I think that there's a, a kind of a relevance, there's a kind of global relevance um, beyond uh, Bosnia and the Balkans of the tribunal and the, the blueprint of justice that it represents um, and um, whether it, it offers a way forward to other countries that are uh, struggling uh, to emerge from the darkness of war um, and uh, whether it, it could be a way, sadly with so many crimes being kind of committed around the world, uh, to deliver um, justice to, to victims. So it was a combination of the historic, but uh, it felt that there was a very kind of contemporary um, and urgent uh, significance to what was happening in that building. And, um, as I said, it, it felt it was a real privilege uh, that 
the tribunal and the lawyers and witnesses that came to give evidence from both sides, um, you know, agreed to film and um, allowed us to kind of tell that, that story, which, you know, we, as I said, very, feel very privileged to be able to have been able to tell. Ima li još pitanja, kolege, izvalite? Izvalite? The vast majority of the time, which didn't make it on television, uh, he was um, polite, quiet, listening, engaged uh, with each witness, with the arguments, and uh, very much um, involved in the process. From my seat across the room, um, he was a normal uh, accused. And with some exceptions during exceptionally stressful times, he would act out, which is what the, uh, the public probably sees more of. But the vast majority of the time, he was um, a, a general charged with very serious crimes that was listening very carefully to the evidence and reacting to it, um, but in a, a normal and reasonable way in most cases. When victims testified, he was shaken. You could see that he was shaken like the court was. Um, and when he disagreed with uh, witnesses, you could see he disagreed. But it was all very normal from, from my perspective as a prosecutor, with the exceptions that you would have seen at his, uh, at his judgment and at other times. But most of the time, uh, he was together. He was uh, himself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining the festival.